call the meeting to order. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that anybody wants to add or amend tonight? Um, I think the only thing I just wanted to add, <coughs> maybe we could have a discussion towards like after the um, the hybrid meeting costs, if we could just just have a brief discussion on the emergency weather preparedness. You know, yeah. the reason I had kind of chatted back and forth today on, you know, luckily we didn't get with anything, but, you know, what did we learn? You know, what yeah. do we still have that we could? And I had other town managers report, but you can add it sure. to the. Sure, yeah, we'll just talk about it. And I had a response fresh. for Tatro. Uh, David asked a question. I have an answer for that for under town manager's report, but. Yeah, so we can just add that. I have another little thing about Tatro that I'd like to ask. Okay, we can go on to it then. We'll cover okay. it all. We'll do it all then. Sure. That's under the town manager report? Yeah, because yep, he emailed me a question, so I got an answer. Okay. okay. Anything else? Just need a motion mm -hmm. to approve mm -hmm. as amended. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. I <clears throat> uh, just want to make sure that everybody, because um, there is public hearings tonight on two, two issues, just to make sure that everybody has signed in so we can put you into the record. If you haven't done it now, do it so on your way out. Um, so first first up is our public hearing and public comment period for all interested persons related to the draft analysis of Brownfield's cleanup alternatives. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, that is the former Valley Motors uh, property located at, located at 207 Pleasant Street in Bethel. Um, and I, I don't know, was it about a year ago when we when you guys were here, probably about that. Um, so, so currently the site site is owned by Green Mountain Economic Development Corporation, um, and um, it, before it, they had brought brought through what the the site's going to look like and the development of the site, and then it would be turned back over to. Um, yep, absolutely. Well, it won't be GW Plastics anymore. It'll be. It Nalato. It will be Nalato. Nalato and Ellie. As soon as it's cleaned up. So if you guys want to introduce yourselves, that would be yeah. great. Thank you. Bob Haynes, uh, former executive director of Green Mountain Economic Development. April 2nd, I stepped down. Erica Hoffman Keese is the current uh, executive director. I am managing special projects. This is one of the ones I'm trying to finish up. So you <coughs> shouldn't have to um, scratch your head and say, what about this and what about that? Steve Shaw is here with us. He's going to do the whole of the presentation.
protect their receptors or the environment. So, the, so we're not going to do the first option. Um, the second option we looked at was what it would look like to take down the building, abate the asbestos, take down the building, remove the piece of the concrete, and then cap the remaining low-level contamination and so on. And so that would protect the sensitive receptors. The, the contamination and so on would be protected from sensitive receptors by an uh, impermeable barrier of six inches with a geotextile membrane, membrane below it. And then the third option would be to take down the building, remove the PCB concrete, and then dig out all the contaminated soil so that there's nothing left there. And so the differences between those, those second two options, which are really the real two options, uh, one is that the second option would cost about a million dollars. And uh, sorry, this, this, the third option, to remove all the material, would cost about a million dollars. And the second option would cost about five hundred thousand dollars in that ballpark. So it's much cheaper to leave the material there. And it's also protected with sensitive receptors. The, the contamination is low level, so it's below industrial standards. So <clears throat> as it exists, you wouldn't want to put a house on top of it, but if you capped it, you could then protect all sensitive receptors. And so for the for the low level contamination, it doesn't make sense to remove half a million dollars worth of dirt. Um, you can cap that dirt and then geoplastics or, or another user could use it for a part of So tentatively accepted option two as the cleanup alternative, and then develop the corrective action plan. This meeting serves as a notification for, as a public comment period for both the corrective action plan and the APCA, which precedes the corrective action plan. So you can read them both together. The APCA is available on GMEDC's website. The corrective action plan is available on the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation's website on their environmental research tool. So you just punch in the site name, which is Dye Motor Sales in Bethel. It'll come up and it will have a document there that you can look at and review. <clears throat> and basically what it does, it lays out all the specifications, all the uh, engineering that's gone into the how we would remove the building, how the asbestos containing material will be removed, how the PCB concrete will be removed, and then lastly, how we cap the contaminated soil. So at the end of all of this, what it would look like is building would be removed, this area would be capped with some sort of impermeable, impermeable barrier, either an asphalt or a, or a porcelain pack, um, like a shirt pack, like packed gravel. And then at that point, GMEB, the site would be clean, it would be, it would be issued with a certificate of completion by the EPC, and then GMEC would be able to sell the property back to GW Plastics, and they'd be able to do, do the parking or for another use they decide. So you're saying, just for the minutes, I just yeah. want to clarify this. So there, you're removing the building, you're removing the concrete, and then you're capping what's there. But they could build a building over that. At some point in the future, there's no reason that they couldn't do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. But you're not removing all the concrete. We're not going to remove all the concrete. We're going to remove everything up until uh, about a uh, foot down all throughout. So we have room to the cap in and probably some of the frost wall. So you wouldn't see it. concrete needs to be removed separately and it needs to be disposed of separately. But everything else is just standard concrete flooring can be removed and go to standard C D right now. The capping, I'm assuming, but I, I don't want to make an assumption, the possibility of leaching those contaminants out uh, because they're still in the ground and relatively close to the river, is there a leach risk? Yeah, so the, answer, the short answer is no. Uh, there's two reasons for that. The first is the, because the cap itself is impermeable, so we're not expecting to see infiltration through the cap. There'll also be a ge geotextile barrier between the actual cap material and the contaminants below. And the second reason is that the type of contaminants and the levels we see are the type of contaminants are remain absorbed to soil pretty strongly, so they don't tend to be even exposed. Um, and also at the low levels. So there's there's two, there's really three lines of evidence to suggest that we don't expect to see any leach. Okay. These, these plans have been reviewed by the EPA office in Boston and also by the Environmental Conservation and Welfare Working Group. 
And so, and I, I should mention, I guess, that also that, so the public comment period runs until September 6th. Um, you can send comments either to Bob, who's, who's the official representative for the site, or if you read the correct action plan online on the DEC's website, there's a place there that you can make comments or, or as you see fit. So upon uh, approval, what is the what is the schedule of work look like? Uh, is this going to be a springtime event yeah. or? We're hoping to finish that before uh, before the snow falls. Oh, this fall. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So so um, we're working towards that. We we have a schedule. We've been holding to. We think we can get it done. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, it will depend a little bit on what they're cooperating. Uh, but we, we think we're going to have a strong chance to have it. And I'm trying to retire, so. <laughs> <laughs> So where do those contaminated materials go? Yeah, so the, uh, the, the PCB concrete will go to a landfill, a hazardous waste landfill in New Hampshire. Um, and everything else can go to CMB waste can go to regular CMB landfill. And asbestos can go to a temple landfill for asbestos. And that will depend on the contract for this selection, right? The subcontract for this uh, Not for the PCB concrete. PCB concrete is going to go to turn key just because that's the, the, the nearest place to accept uh, PCB. So you're going to have large equipment coming through town, just disposing of the materials and whatnot. We don't think we don't think it's time to get Yeah, it's, it's a pretty small but as well as goes to a small building, so we don't anticipate it being. There's a safety plan and it'll be flagged up and carefully done. And we've also been talking to see if we can include school children um, as a teaching exercise or interested residents uh, um, about this process and what we're doing and why we're doing it. And, you know, basically, GW is shoehorned in here, and this will give them some options for mm -hmm. circulation. Um, they, don't, they don't really know exactly what they want to do in the future, but it would be amazing if they did something there, at least parking. Um, so they're looking forward to continuing to add to their um, infrastructure there, which is, you know, in our opinion, quite nice. And uh, the good group of citizens and they employ you know, several hundred people. And uh, they, have, they have worldwide distribution of the products and no customers in the market. So wow. whatever, they, whatever they built, um, they spend a lot of time mm -hmm. working on there now owned by the Swedish company. Very, very strong, so they can go after new projects that they um, feel uh, they would like to with, with terrific back. So, um, you know, we think they're here forever and will be a really strong part of the Bethel community and the region for a long, long time. I think the only um, concern that I have, being the time of year in which you're looking to do the work on the site, is, is that <clears throat> in front of, well, we'll call it the Valley Motors property. That is a major uh, pedestrian for children artery uh, to and from school. Yep. So uh, children use that side of the road to walk to school, but also the northern corner of that property they use to come down to cross to go to the ball field. So I, I guess I would just you know emphasize that in the bid process that the contractor has it set to make sure that the pedestrian traffic is well protected there because it is going to be children. Yeah, we feel um, exactly the same way. Okay. Yeah, one of the, one of the, and you'll see in the correct action plan, we have a specification for fencing around the site during the construction so there's no one coming into the site or getting onto the site. And if you have flaggers, you have to walk pedestrians across the street anyways, I think. Isn't that an MATCD standard? So if there's flaggers, there has to be someone to, so I thought. So, you know, we heard a rumor, Bob, that, uh, that GW Plastics was looking for people and they were so desperate for people that they were actually busing people in to work from Boston and then putting them up in hotels. And, you know, I don't, you know I'm not really sure how the town can assist them. I do think that, that GW has reached out to VTC and is working with a program there to get, you know, more trained, you know, people, you know, involved. But 
I, we were really surprised to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that, but it's difficult for Bethel. It's not like we have a place to put up a lot of people, but um, I'm not sure if you see how the town could be helpful in this case at all. Well, Kathy Tempest is HR director. She's on the GMC yep. board. And Ben Rail, the president, will tell you to ask him. He'll tell you if you don't ask him. The, the first two reasons they lose a prospective employee are housing and child care. Yeah. Or child care and housing. Sure. You know, uh, it's, it's usually both, and, and if it's not one first, it's the other one first. Um, so one of the other things that we're, we're working very hard on is the child care center in Randolph that can yeah. accommodate 86 kids with a lot of family mm -hmm. services. And, and <coughs> it's, it's critically short everywhere. It and is. And so that's something that Eric is working very it's, hard on. It is. It, it, it's a huge issue. Hey, you know, we've been talking about that and looking um, Bethel, you're sitting next to the chair of the Planning Commission, and Rick Benson, we've been talking about, uh, we're meeting in September with the Planning Commission to look again at Bethel and how it's laid out and where can we encourage development and, re and move zoning so that there's more development so people could build multi-family dwellings or subdivide to add housing. So we're looking at that. We need to grow the grand list, but we want to be able to provide housing and opportunity in Bethel. And well, there's, a, there's resources Yes, yes, right, Bethel was part of that, yeah. yes. Well, that is being revisited under the governor's request with the Boston Fed, and they're in the process of revising that now, and it's focused, the focus, compelling cause, is um, entry-level workforce housing and for new entry-level workforce and new entrepreneurs housing. And um, GNBC is sponsoring a VISTA volunteer, America VISTA volunteer, AmeriCorps VISTA volunteer, that's going to be working Well, that's good, and our timing is good because that's what we were working on. But I mean, I feel like, you know, the past, you know, couple governors have been talking about, and for a while they termed it worker housing, you know, so it wasn't low income housing. Yeah. yeah. And so we've been talking about that. And so that's something we're going to start revisiting in September to see where we can make it possible for people to subdivide and do more. And I, um, I wondered, um, you know, so, so that is true. It's, sad and crazy, but hopefully people are enrolling in BTC and, and, and working because obviously GW has a lot of benefits and, and yeah, does a great, great you know, workplace for people, so that's a lot and of... Pat, and Pat Walton, the president of BTC, is also one of our board members, so nice. we're pretty plugged into this right. happening. It's never, it's never been a better time to be looking for grant funds and planning funds and, and um, supported loans for these kinds of projects. Yeah. Uh, the, the philosophy is that the state government wants to know what the talent wants. Mm -hmm. They yeah. don't want to say, okay, we're going to put something here, here, and here. They want to know what the communities are looking for, and they want to support that. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I hear that uh, VTC, due to low student enrollment, was uh, running out uh, dormitories mm -hmm. or yep. um, temporary housing. Possible. They yeah, a lot of yeah they, they have made a deal with the law school uh, to house students there and also um, visiting nurses coming in through the, I'm not sure if it's the VNA program or, or the Department of Health, I think. Okay. They, made a, they made an arrangement to house uh, yeah. nurses up there, too. That's, good. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're taking in quite a bit of money on it, too. I mean, it's sure. there. But their own uh, student enrollment resident student enrollment has increased over what they expected it to be too. Yeah. Um, so they're, nice. they're, they're finding creative ways to use their housing. That's terrific. And the child center, I mean, if that goes through, they bought the buildings or they have an agreement to buy the building. We have an option on yeah. the lower building at yep. the enterprise center, which yep. is 10,700 square feet. 
Yep, need some it renovation. Needs to but be taken apart, put back together again. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a big problem. But 86 kids, and lots of family services, education programs. And that cost the 89. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a no brainer. Governor, or Senator Sanders came in. Senator Sanders came to see it a few weeks ago. And this is one of the staff members. He was here, and it's so close to exit 4. He wants to go see it. So he said, boy, it's close to exit 4. Yeah, you swing right into McDonald's and get a Happy Meal. It's there, you know? Well, you know, you could live in the Wake River and work in Montpelier and drop your kids off and pick them up when you went home. Or you could, you know, live in Northfield and work in the Wake River or, you know, pretty much anywhere. So it's not just a So we'll send you a copy of the minutes. That way you have them for your process. Appreciate it. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. Erica, take care. Yep. I'm sure. Further discussion in regards to the Pleasant Street property, or okay, we will officially close the public hearing on that portion of it, and we will now open second public hearing, which is the Pat of Bethel zoning bylaws amendments. So we have um, the uh, the proposed amendments have been available for for some time now and this is now the hearing process for those because we had our the planning commission had a public hearing already yeah. so once they and this made will, the report now to give it to you this will officially close in 30 days from now is that i think correct? so yeah it sounds about right <laughs> that's fine i'm going to revisit them yes so, and um i mean i know we were talking that you know i mean the, the bylaws are you know rather <laughs> cumbersome to go through but you know the um there wasn't really uh, any major changes done to the bylaws this time around like there was five years ago when when we had the river corridor pieces and others to examine so um, a lot of the changes were smaller in nature um, this time around so hopefully everybody had a opportunity to look at that i know uh, Therese had reached out to the board members ahead of time of the of your meeting to say you guys have anything because you know there's a I don't know what the fine line is between a small adjustment yeah, and a major adjustment is, but, change, but but if there's a substantial change, yeah. then it has to go back to the committee. Um, I don't know what that definition really is, but yeah. um, if it's minor changes, that we can do that at this level and right. continue the process without you know without setbacks. So <laughs> yeah, so as we we as we reach out at a time, like yeah. now's the time. I don't know, really know what the definition is between the two, like where you know, skirt that line. But yeah, I think um, it's if it's something small, it doesn't really change the. <laughs> yeah meaning I think then mm -hmm. if we would have a case for having to go back and but yeah we've had information out we had in the newspaper for both obviously public hearing there's a whole section of laws and rules laid out that you have to follow very specifically about how to get zoning amendments um, you know passed for, for Rick and I uh, you know Rick God bless him is also the chair of the you know the DRB so he and I sat down at one point and I you know I on the zoning administrator were like look there's just some weird like stuff that you could tell was a mistake or a misprint or we had defined for example roadside commercial but you didn't allow it in any district so we kind of there was just a couple things that <laughs> being the one to enforce the zoning regulations that's kind of the thing about it. the planning commission writes the zoning regulations but the zoning administrator and the drb enforce them so there was just some some of it was just clerical some of it was you know clean up and tend and um, you know that we just felt like we really needed to kind of square away and we are writing a planning grant because we are going to do an overhaul a bigger overhaul of the zoning regulations there's been state statute changes we tried to pick up some of those um, and Kevin Geiger of Two Rivers reviewed it and gave us some suggestions and um, 
but then like I said, we wanted to try to open up, uh, look at opening up and changing some of the districting and so, but that'll be in the next round. So hopefully, I think what was the October or December, we have to submit the grant and then we'll get approval and if we get approval in January, then we start the process. That would be a little more involved. Oh yeah. So there'll be more, more input. Yeah, there was a couple topics that came up that we had said, okay, we're not, that's for a bigger rewrite. These are just kind of the low hanging fruit yeah. things we want to clean up. Yeah, we did get into a couple things. A couple of things here that needed to be addressed that was a little more involved, you know, private roads and, and just, it was really just making it more readable and making, having the document make more sense. It was kind of convoluted in a lot of places. Gene was great as far as giving us good feedback on, on that as far as you know, how to make, make it a little more readable and understandable. So, you know, it, it was really just from the DRB doing what we do and finding little hiccups here and there. Um, the root portal was a small part of that work. It was um, one section was, was actually not following with another section. We had to make sure we went back and, and read us and straighten that out. And, um, you know, we came across some few new things like uh, tiny houses and just how to address that. Um, so there were a few <coughs> definitions. We cleaned up a lot of that and added some and moved some. So I think it's a more readable document for those who, who do read it, but um, it will have to be our I think we all had some kind of question marks, or, or Kelly or I would call Rick and get, what does this mean? And, 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 we, and we kind of said, okay, well, this is how it has been interpreted in the past, so we, you know, trying to be consistent. Mm -hmm. But there were some a couple things that were just, what? You know? <laughs> and that was just a result of going from, we had, we had zoning regs and we had subdivision regs. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that happens. We're still, you know, there's still things that we scratch mm -hmm. a little bit about. Well, things like tiny houses and the Airbnbs weren't, weren't, you know, a big thing back right, five term, years ago. Short term, yeah. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, something to get concerned about. And short term rentals, that's a yeah. big hot button yeah. issue right now. Short to like Airbnbs is a big issue right now. And part of it is because of housing. There's a big fight in Burlington going on. Um, you know, the city of Burlington doesn't want a lot of Airbnbs because they feel that's taking rental properties away from, you know, maybe working for monitors or students. So there's, you know, so there's stuff like that that we hadn't tackled or that we, we did here, what we did here because it's coming, it, it's more. Yeah, you know, there's more of a topic in the town now than, mm -hmm. than people know. Absolutely, I agree with that. Yeah. Has it, having sat in on a good bit of that, um, I absolutely <coughs> think the, the changes make it easier to enforce and administer uh, the zoning, both from your perspective and from the zoning uh, officer. I, I think that's lion's share of what, of what was done was to clarify so that if a person came in for a permit or needed a permit or whatever, there was a rationale, and it was much easier to understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any questions? Anybody from the board have any questions in regards no. to it, other than what had been submitted? Or? No. You guys hear from me? Uh, yeah. Keen to see what's going on. Feels like we have to be 
I think part of it, like we were saying, is one of our plans is to help increase the grant list, which would take some of the pressure off some of the businesses as well as some of the residents. If we could open up some land so that people maybe who have 10 acres could sell some off if they wanted to to develop their property where maybe current zoning regulations would prohibit them from doing that so that that way it increases the value of the grand list which helps you know with that tax base uh, certainly as well and and um, you know been trying to really push uh, during this water project signage we got a grant for seventy six hundred dollars for free advertisement for some of the lower you know smaller businesses um, to try to advertise to get people to shop locally um, certainly during COVID, there was a big push from the state, which we participated in and, and advertised for people who maybe had arrearages uh, with uh, rental or taxes or water. And, and we did end up um, getting residents that we were able to get about, I think it was about $16,000 to Bethel residents to help them clear up past, you know, delinquent or late water utility stuff during COVID. And, there's another round of that out now that we're um, helping to advertise. And so um, we were awarded a Better Connections grant um, and 30,000 of that's gonna go towards developing a stormwater plan, which will be helpful for businesses, you know, like um, somebody right here near the river, of course, we Bethel Mills and some different areas in town. And then also with that Better Connections grants to get some information on maybe better wayfinding signage, um, accessibility. certainly accessibility for to open up because it's like Bethel for all ages eight to 80 to try to see what can business owners and building owners do, but what can we do you know, as a municipality to help make things more accessible to do what you're saying, which is encourage more people to come and, yeah. and shop here, whether they're tourists or local, you know, to make sure that we're open for everybody. So we're certainly, um, you know, we've, got a paving grant this year, a structures grant this year, uh, two better roads grants, and, and you know certainly if there's a place to have our hand out, we, we have it out. So and to do exactly what you're saying, Uriah, which is try to bring some of those funds into town so it's not taxpayer dollars. A 20% or 10% match is a heck of a lot better than footing the whole bill. Yeah. So um, you're certainly it's right just, about that. Are you talking about Tessie's Tavern? Yeah. Yeah, because they're open. Yeah. Uh, they were closed for a while because they needed staff. Yeah. But now that, uh, well, and they also did a little restructuring in their business. But now that they've yeah. done that, they're back. And certainly, um, you know, reach out to the people. We have uh, Chuck Lyman and Ken, I can't remember his last name. Ken Carter. Carter, thank you. Part of the local, you know, who does the VASA, and they come in every year, ask for permission to drive on the trails, in which the select board always gives them. And um, but certainly reach out to one of them and see maybe there's you know to present your ideas about hey you know is there they know all the trails is there a way to get people to the gas station or things like that and and um, they have great communication they come to the select board every year and they've always granted them what they asked for for yeah New Hampshire does pretty good yeah they do you're right yeah absolutely and that's the challenge that we have in a small town of Bethel especially Bethel where it's <clears throat> really unique with the river corridor systems is is our footprint is we, we have our footprint has pretty much been maximized based upon what the river and, and, and surrounding areas is and you know and then you know we saw it you know back in the I don't know, it was around the late 70s, you know. A lot of people used to shop locally, and then, you know, late 70s and 80s, you started seeing things like, you know, the West Lebanons and stuff, the box chains come in, and, and, and it, then it drove, you know, citizens out to the big box stores, which then left the, you know, the, the smaller downtown shops uh, struggling to, to sell the same shirt, right? Yeah. Um, 
and then now it, you know, it, it, most of the, you know, they can't compete with the big box stores, so they have to get creative, and usually the creative ideas end up to be more touristy, you know, end of things, which is great for tourists, you know, when they're coming in and spending money, but like you said, then the local citizens end up, you know, having a harder time of either mm -hmm. paying more for something or, you know, um, it's kind of a, it's, it's, it's a struggle there. Yeah. You know, because, yeah. You know, once you get gray in your beard and get older, you realize every single thing used to be more, or now you had more, now you're, everything you buy, you're paying more, but getting less. Mm. Oh, yeah. And it's just kind of, a, it's kind of getting old. Yeah. And I think what we're trying to do right now, like what Teresa was saying is, you know, <clears throat> how can we better maximize our footprint that we already have? So, I mean, we're, yeah. you know, we're very limited on everything when we talk about, like, water customers. Like, how can we get an extra couple water customers, right? I mean, we're just, because, you know, you can't really expand the system much. And the same with the downtown area. It's like, you know, you can't really, it's not like, oh, look at all that property across the river. Like, it's not there. So, I think, you know, talking about the planning commission, and how can we, in some cases, make some of our bylaws easier um, well still have the same effect but easier to open up some of those properties that right now maybe you know you couldn't um, you know break apart um, to, to you know hopefully either if that's either a business or if that's housing or you know whatever so creating events that bring stuff into our community is important You should reach out to Mary Floyd or um, Brad Andrews at Mills Hardware because they are working this year on Forward Fest. Obviously with COVID, we didn't have it last year and the year before it went really well. They do a street dance and they're really yeah. trying to expand the Forward Fest. That's always a um, good thing. Certainly and, Lindley and, and I learned yeah. about going to its economic development mm -hmm. class to kind of take <clears throat> one event you already have and blow right. it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, D-Tree did it only a couple of Family Fun Fridays this year, but there was like a drumming thing. and. Next year she wants to do more, but coming out of the gate it was very difficult to plan because of COVID. Yeah. We weren't sure what the rules were going to be. Yeah. So she did a couple, but she did have Youth Beats in, which was a great program. Yeah. And um, she certainly has all these, she had all these great plans for this year, and they're all on tap now for next year. And the select board wants um, Dietrich to direct to, you know, um, to develop some programming to use the hall more, you know, whether it's movie and working with a business down so it's movie, you know, dinner and a movie. So if you yeah. get a pass, you go, you know, work with a local business to go to dinner there first. Try to, you know, to make some creative partnerships and yeah. certainly um, BRI is another place for that's always looking for um, volunteers, the Bethel revitalization. Um, that would be, you could talk to Lindley or Kirk White or you know, uh, Rebecca Sanborn Stone about getting involved with that because honestly, you know, we need volunteers. Uh, the Planning Commission needs people. Um, I can't think of a, you know, the BRI needs people. Uh, the Ford Fest Committee, they need volunteers. And if that's not a year round commitment, that's just like a commitment, you know, for that time frame. Do we need bodies and people like yourselves that are interested? In the community and, and stepping up and getting involved because you know what happens otherwise it's the same things fall to the same people uh, you know over and over our planning commission could have nine people on it and it's myself and rick and denise and zoe and kyle who are kind of one because they that's it four people we could have nine yeah so you know and we have sent personal invitations and ads and talked about it in town report and at town meeting and for some reason volunteerism is really low and we, and we certainly need more. So it's great that you guys are thinking about that. And, and there's plenty of space. But yeah, if you swing down to Mills Hardware, Brad will sign you right up, I am sure, to help with the Song for Forward Fest. And, and that would be a great place to start. There, there is a forum here tomorrow night that will be brainstorming ideas for recreation. Uh, for a specific grant that we want to write to, around to trails. Apply for, some, a, yeah. for a grant. So, yeah. you know, Eddie, come and listen and join that. Yeah, um, I've been doing a lot with the rec car with the other after schools and the skating and stuff and the hockey and the other lady that works with her. D 
Deidre? Yeah, Deidre yeah. Feeney, yeah, she runs the pool direct. She runs the pool and helps with the skate park. She's on the recreation committee. Yeah. Ellie. Ellie. Oh, Ellie Griffin. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, uh, Mr. Moderator, I'm wondering if we could go back to the Planning Commission mm -hmm. hearing <laughs> and uh, then reopen the public comment. If there's yeah, that's fine. I mean, it, uh, I think his discussion, you know, was kind of in and around, you know, zoning mm -hmm. and planning, um, which is good. And, and, and we definitely hear, you know, hear what you're saying, and you know, I, I think we are trying to take some of those all steps. Of us so. are really gone through the Thank you for your comments this evening. Mm -hmm. Did um, <coughs> we have anything further in regards to the zoning bylaw amendments? Are we good with that portion? Of the so you have to make a um, motion. Motion to, to accept, accept them. So we just need a motion to accept the Town of Bethel zoning bylaw amendments. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> and now we'll open up to public comment. So if there's anything that's not on the agenda, um, anybody wants to talk about, now's the time to do it. Was, uh, well, I just want to take a couple minutes. I drove by the town offices yesterday afternoon, and <laughs> guess who's <laughs> there? You, you know, that. Therese yeah. and, and Kelly yeah, there, Kelly and there. Uh, putting out all sorts of information on the town's website and the Facebook pages and coordinating amongst the various groups, Bethel Strong, Bethel Community. As someone who got caught in Irene in a bad way, we got taken out in a rescue boat. You know, I, whenever we have an event like this, I start getting like this. Yeah. And it was good to have that information there because it was current and it gave me a good update. Plus I was looking at the national weather and that was all tied in too. So my compliments to, to you and Kelly and everybody else yeah. who, who put that together. I'm Thanks, sure. yeah. It, helped. Thank it was reassuring and, and it fed the information on a current basis, not looking at Burlington TV Weather station or something. Yeah. You right. know, that has no idea what's, what's happening down here, this yeah. end of the state. So thank you. Yeah, it's, you know, we, it was, you know, we, <coughs> Kelly and I started talking about it on Friday and then we, you know, just started accumulating information, and I think it's a it's a tricky balance where you, in, for me personally, where people have been through a lot of trauma for Irene, and and it was really devastating. So you're trying to find that balance of giving people information to encourage preparedness and self reliance without actually alarming and, and panicking people. So you know, and obviously we didn't really know for a while what we we're dealing with, and so we monitoring on Friday, and then you know Saturday. And, I talked to Chris and then, you know, but and then Sunday still weren't quite sure. And so I was yeah. on the phone, you know, I talked yep. to Alan. And so I talked to the road foreman and the utility director and the fire chief. And then I called Kelly and said, look, I'm going to the office for a few hours. It's easier to do this stuff here and kind of lay it out. And, you know, would you mind coming in and, if you, you know, for half an hour, an hour and help me? You know, I wanted to get some forms copied and signs printed and going over the rules of FEMA. And if we had to just, you know, how do you track the information? And, and all those sorts of things but um yeah just kind of you know trying to to feed it but i was glad i got your email and you'd open that culvert up and mm -hmm. it was yep. funny because i had thought about that one time that i checked my email I was like yes well because richard was gone and yep. so it was really good that you had done that and and yep. i think it's a line and, and i think and i and we said this today to dylan kelly i said it to calvin whatever calvin's last name is from cax today people need to sign up for vermont alert Every, and I said to them, every, it, to Calvin, I said, this is not just best, this is every resident in the state of Vermont needs to sign up for VT Alert. We have very few people signed up in Bethel. And, you know, we can put the information out there, but, 
you know, the more people that get those alerts, if you're busy and you're not using, don't have a radio on or you don't have a TV or your TV's not going, you can miss stuff. So um, that's still a big <coughs> encouraging and we've talked about it in town meeting and in town report and we'll talk about it yeah. again. And, but, um, yeah. but well, it's good. I'm glad that you found that it was the right balance. So that's important. Oh, yeah. So that's no, good, I Paul. So. I'm really thankful that you. <coughs> I did not live here during Irene, but I was did happen to be here that weekend. Mm. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. You ran so away. So I, I have some idea of what uh, what was entailed, uh, but uh, I just wanted to also I want to join the chorus. It felt comforting when I was anxious about a possibility of Irene. It was comforting to, for me to have emails or communication from the town saying, look, the town's getting ready, and I, you can do your part. And uh, I did forward that first email on Friday, and I received boatloads of thanks and appreciation because people because it said, you can do this. You should have food for four mm -hmm. days, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> it was very helpful yep. and much appreciated. Uh, Laura Perez was nice. She reached out to me on Sunday, I think, saying, um, you know, pointing, saying it was an article, a 2017 or 18 FEMA article about accessibility and the information and things that people maybe with special need might need. and. So I said to her, that's great. If you get that document up and form and get it to me, I will do it, which was nice to be able to give that back to her to say. And she was uh, very kind and took care of it. She, she said, I'll have it to you in the afternoon. She did. And so it was something nice, something with some tips that we can incorporate into future. So I still have a stack. I kept every note. I was dating. You know, This is the date and time I spoke to people. This is the things we discussed. And, now, and I want to kind of look those over, type them back up. And, and, and next time we'll have more of, okay, so now these are things to add besides make sure you have medication. It's, you know, make sure if you have a, uh, if you have a, a dog, um, a pet food, a seeing eye dog or whatever, do you have, make yeah. sure it has its tags on it, make sure that you have, you know, all those things. So there was some nice tips that she incorporated from an earlier FEMA article that I think, you know, that we'll now be able to put out with those tips that we'll have, you know, another layer, so. And it was nice of her, and, uh, you know, Cindy was all set to go with the emergency shelter and had that conversation. And um, so it was nice to know that, um, you know, it's a little bit of, you know, you had a little, you had a little bit of a plan at least. And, and, and luckily you have so many people here that have been through it before that were totally prepared. And, and, you know, I called a few people and said, okay, what, you know, during Irene, what would you wish you knew in advance? What are some things we should incorporate in this? So that was kind of nice. The fire chief had been through it, the utility director. So they had some good tips to say, oh, hey, this is what, and, and so, and then in the end it was, you know, the fire chief was like, you know what, Therese, we'll do all this, and it was great. He's like, but in the end, take a deep breath, we'll deal with it. Whatever happens, we will, we'll find it, we'll fix it, and we'll, we'll put it back together. So, which was also nice to know you had experienced people, you know, with you in it. So, which is nice. Of course, we did it. Thanks. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. A lot of prayers. <laughs> Please know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Well, thank you for all your work on the yeah, this thank document, you very much. and we're gonna. <laughs> We'll just start again in yeah. September. So I did find the meeting on my calendar, so I will do, a, we'll have to do an agenda and all that, yeah. I'll get that out. But so, and then um, maybe it's some bigger maps from Two Rivers and a couple things so that we can write on them. <laughs> I think Pam would yell at us if we wrote on the one of the office. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good, any further public comment?
not not specifically like a well, I wouldn't say not specifically a wildfire, but um, I mean I know there are some scenarios in there on some preparedness, not not necessarily at the town level, but at the fire department level, and and I I will only say that because the town of Killington experienced a wildfire outbreak um, back in June, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, and and probably the most active fire department that fought that fire was our fire department. Um, even the town of Killington. Um, pretty much refused to fight their own fire. So <laughs> it was it was neighboring towns yeah, that came had, to the aid. Well, they have like three, they only had like yeah. a couple, three people. Yeah, they didn't yeah. have hardly anybody. So so Bethel, you know, took um, a larger stance in, in that. And I, I know that they do, you know, our uh, the good thing about our fire department is they have trained in multiple scenarios of, you know, white water ref, rescue, um, forest fires and, and other, Similar events like that. Um, mm -hmm. I would say if a large scale, I mean, I don't think anybody's prepared for any type of large scale event, you know, kind of like an Irene thing, like, you know, you just never would have thought that that would have ever happened until it did. But, yeah. um, and, and depending where it is, you can reach out to the national or to the, but the local, local community right. for Local us. EMS has some plans in place in case there is any type of large fire event on, on how, you know, they practice all the time on on um, you know who responds and who helps out to you know to sit at that location in case there's a local emergency issue um, so they, they practice those quite often there, there is a national uh, parks yep. but there's an office in rochester they have about 40 people who participate in wildfire uh, all over the country so it, something were to happen here and it wasn't, they already weren't <laughs> out there, yeah, yeah. Uh, they would, I'm sure they would be here in a, in a flag. I'm sure it's like anything else too, right? It would be the state of Vermont, it would be the National Guard if you needed them, it would be National or the <coughs> State Forest Service and, and things like that, so. Um, We have, uh, next on the agenda we have, uh, there was a resignation in there of Jerry Thomas from the EIC. Um, so he had sent along his letter. Um, so we would just need a motion to accept his resignation. So moved. And a second. Se second. Okay. Well, second all favor. Thank you uh, for participating. Yeah. I, I, did, I guess I didn't understand that he, he had taken a, another position and he wasn't in the area. Um, yeah, it says state, Washington, yeah. wa Washington yeah. State yeah. Court of Appeals. I mean, appeals. that's close enough, isn't it, Washington yeah. State? <laughs> I mean, we have, we have mean, Zoom and stuff now. I mean, for I a while, he was, he was still yeah. signing into their calls remotely, but I think uh, yeah. timing-wise, it just... Well, when I read it, I saw Washington State. I had to reread yeah. it again. He hung on as long as he could. Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw uh, that. Three I hours. You know, it's, what, three like, hours or something? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's not just... Yeah, the time here, here, yeah, right? here yeah. at 5 a.m., right? Well, he was, he, the last few meetings, he was actually sitting at work yeah, yeah. On, on the call, so it was, like, it was clear <laughs> it was not going to last much longer. Yeah. So we had a motion and a second, and we were all in favor, so we're good yep. there. And then uh, we had another resignation, David Aiken um, from the South Royalton Senior Citizens Board of Directors. That was a letter. That was the a year 2020 was not a favorite of mine. Yeah. <laughs> Beginning on February 8th when I died in my driveway. I'm like, that is the biggest yeah. understatement of the year. Yeah. I, I had to like, read it three times to realize. I was I, like, yeah. no, that's yeah. really what he's saying. Massive heart attack. Yeah. I know. And he comes Massive in with, you know, jelly and oh, yeah. he always, and he comes and yeah. distributes yeah. it. We talk yeah. about the clock up here. And, uh, yeah. but when I read his letter, I was like, Wow, and just the wording of his letter, but um, what a nice, nice man. Now, Paul uh, Baylor yeah. came on that board of directors. Yep. Do we need to appoint a second? It's, that's what I was going to ask. Carol, maybe um, Carol might. I was no? going to ask Carol, yeah. yeah. Okay. 
I assume we do, but um, I just wanted to... I don't know how active Dave was. So. Yeah, I didn't know either, so I um, I was curious about that <coughs> myself. But, <laughs> but his letter well, so we was... thank him for, for his service, and we just need a motion to accept his resignation. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Thanks. Take care. Thanks, Thank you. Um, next, we had the Better, Better Connections Grant Steering Committee's request to hire. Um, so there, um, I have a letter I talked, we met. Um, so the voice of King, right? Yeah, so there was a couple, we met on Friday to go over the results. Mm -hmm. And um, Lily had input myself. Um, um, Cindy Metcalf, Owen, um, Daniel Carter, and uh, so we went through it. And then, um, so Nicole wrote me a nice uh, letter, you know, today for the board. And she had checked references and um, the selection committee. I'll just read you the little piece here. One paragraph. The selection committee recommends that the town of Bethel hire the Dubois and King Consulting Firm to manage the better. Uh, Bethel Better Connections planning process. We felt their proposal embraced the project goals outlined in the Bethel for All RFP. We appreciated that their application was well written and detailed. Additionally, they have previous experience with Better Connection grants. Their average application score is 94 out of 105, giving them the second highest score during the reading and scoring round of the selection. Um, but during their interview, they provided specific examples of product uh, projects which were innovative, inclusive, and community-led. Their team was receptive to questions asked by the selection committee and expanded upon their planning experiences with enthusiasm. Most impressive was the ability of their in-person representative, Dayton Kreitz, to assist with facilitating the hybrid in-person virtual interview. Um, so everyone that was present felt you know, really engaged. Um, and we certainly all, the selection committee agreed that in, during the interview round, the Dubois and King had the best interview. Um, so uh, Nicole checked some references and uh, she said that as far as DNK goes, they described the team um, as receptive to the needs and requests of various stakeholders, including municipal staff, steering committee members and residents. They felt as though they got their money's worth and would feel comfortable hiring them again. And, um, you know, so I um, went to both interviews with Du Bois and King and Tool and we read the proposals. And, um, and I certainly agreed with them. And in, the, in, in the end, which was just a coincidence, that Tool and D&K had the exact same price. So it wasn't a mm -hmm. low bidder, high bidder yeah, was strange, type of thing. It was funny just the way it worked out. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting the way it worked out, but um, mm. certainly they nailed their presentation. and. Um, Really so the only situation. question I had, that, so this is a this is a plan. This is not actual work. This is a development of a plan that will then lead to suggestions or, or development well, of, and of construction grant opportunities. Right. So a lot of this yeah. is really that it expands what grants we become right. eligible for by having this master plan. And I think it's a lot like you know uh, Therese often says with our road projects, <coughs> like the shovel ready projects. Yeah. This is a really similar concept, except that. I think it goes even sort of one step further that the state actually puts out specific grants for towns that have done this planning process. Mm -hmm. And so then we go into an even smaller pool of eligibility right. Right. and we're only competing with other towns that have done this same planning yeah. process. So then we're, it's not an assured thing, and, but and it's- And those grants would then be converted into actual physical changes. Yeah, exactly. Those yeah. become implementation so, grants versus so, right. the planning so grants. So money for this, the $98,000, is from where? Is from the state. The seven thousand dollars we've been carrying. Remember that seven thousand yeah, yeah, we've been carrying yeah, forever. Yeah. So that's our match, okay. and um, or maybe it's seventy four hundred, but very close to that. And thirty thousand of this is for the stormwater master plan, right. which we had originally wanted a specific project done, and then the state reviewed them and said, eh, mm, you know, eh, but you can do a master plan. So which is honestly is good. They'll come out with three to five, probably three really flushed out designs, uh, pro 
places that we need, you know, stormwater issues mm -hmm. that we're aware of, and they'll take a lot of the data that we've already had done. Mm -hmm. So we will definitely have a stormwater master plan that we will definitely have, which is terrific. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, we have talked about multiple times about this economic piece. I will say I really loved the guy that, that Du Bois and King had, I think his name was Tripp, and he had been through this process before, and so there'll be some economic indicators and helping the businesses where are your shoppers coming mm -hmm. from and, and some very specific information mm -hmm. for them to help them with their own business model. We also were hoping that some of the businesses, Main Street or, or buildings, not just businesses, would maybe get a little bit of information on exactly, here's some things you can do to increase accessibility to your building now. Um, some pop-ups, different ideas that they're gonna try out and certainly um, that's where the select board definitely comes into play is they need volunteers to help man those. So if you can't commit, obviously, to being on the steering committee, um, which, you know, nobody did. So at least we could, you know, you could maybe help with some of these, these different mm -hmm. events. I miss anything? So, so we're, we're not, we're committing to Du Bois and King only if the grant goes through. We already got the grant. The grant. Already got the grant. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. We were right. awarded the money, yeah. So um, <coughs> then they right. had to go through this whole RFP process. So and the, are we are we taking any action? Yes, yes, we have to because we have a very quick timeline here. Yeah, I will refuse myself because oh. my daughter works at the boy. Oh, okay. Particular <laughs> <laughs> reason. Okay, that makes sense. Um, no, I think the plan. I think the plan is, you know, overall is is good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I. Was well, we kind of to. picking through it this weekend on, mm -hmm. you know, some things, some things in here would have been done anyways, right? right. Like yeah. Teresa and I have been talking about the sidewalks and yeah. Pleasant Street, you well, know. We're talking to about Dave. Dave you know, the next uh, Kevin wanting maybe. to put in his ramp, yeah. you know, out front. Yeah. This would kind of fall into that. Mm -hmm. part if, of you know, there are too. some things in here that I question. I will they ever happen? Like, you know, once you start taking the dimensions of the downtown, like. The road is not wide enough to have appropriate parking and travel lanes. It's, it never will be that unless we went through some like major undertaking to make the road wider, which would just be <laughs> astronomically tear expensive. Yeah. Tear off the front of somebody's building. Right. So it's <laughs> you know. So I mean, and, and, and I think it used you know, to be an overhead. Excuse me. It used to be an overhead. Uh, trolley system or something through here. So some, some of those other things. Postcards from the historical yeah. society. Some of those things that they had pointed out here, and some of the other projects they have done, where like, you know, maybe have like what we better block where there was like a walking lane and you know and things right. like that. It was kind of neat. But the thing is, we just don't have the width, and the only way you could do that is you have to close like parking on one side of the road or something to to be able to access that. Because right now, I mean, we're not legal. Like the park, you know. You're supposed to have, you know, 11 and 8, and, you know, we probably have, like, 11 and 6, you know. I mean, the, the parking stalls aren't wide enough to accomplish those yeah, things, which, think, yeah. which then it complicates things like accessibility to the businesses and the ramps and things like that, because when your downtown is too small to begin with, then it affects Bethel everything Bethel has else, a great so. history of picking up buildings and moving them. I yeah. think we just pick up all the buildings and move them out a little bit and then put yeah. them back yeah, down. Right, exactly. So I think, I, think there's, I think there's good intentions, but oh, I do yes. see some roadblocks yeah. here. And I think, too, you know, they're just doing an RFP. So when they come yeah. out, they're answering an RFP. So obviously they're using or like historically... They're, Historically, what they've done in different places, this was because somebody... Like this example of construction signage on like that on you... The sidewalk. Yeah, I understand, but like having installed temporary signings on poles, I mean, that's never going to happen. Right. right? It never would happen because we'd have to move that thing every day. You yeah, know? right. Exactly. So just some of those things... But it like, could have been oh, in the street, happen. I think, was their point. But, but I, I think, think overall it's good. I just wonder... Is, some of it is that they have to... They're answering the RFP with information, stuff they've already done. They haven't come in and done the work to analyze mm. Bethel. They realize right. some of the challenges we have, so they're going to come up with some creative alternatives. Say, okay, you know, your traffic line is different here, so these are other ways we're going to have to do it. So right. I think, um, you know, and I think that's part of the discovery process, right? Is for them to say Bethel is so unique. What we've done in this town won't work for you, or maybe this piece will, but this piece won't, and right. then. And go from there. So I think it's actually great timing because we've been talking about downtown pedestrian safety and mm -hmm. all those things. So I think it'll be um, interesting to um, you know to come to come together. So 
two, unless anybody opposes to it, just need a motion to accept the proposal from Dubois and King for the village accessibility plan and stormwater master plan. So moved. Second. <coughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. Ongoing discussion for the hybrid meetings that we've been talking about. Let's see if it's. Yep. So we, uh, I met with Rob from Orca Media. It's all kind of blur. One day last week, anyways, I think. And uh, nice guy. So he came in and he said, in his opinion, the owl would not work mm -hmm. for us here. He said, you know, with the ceilings and the acoustics, but what Orca can do is. Um, they come with the camera like they do now, and they come and they bring a laptop. We would have to um, get our, a subscription back to Zoom. And then they use a, they just put a cable in to the computer so the video becomes their video. So as some people talk, they can pan to them, which is what a lot of times what they do now anyway. So then they can do that. One thing he said we might have to do is use either another monitor or, and we've already kind of been talking about a television so that Allen Road Crew, anybody could do training, they could come here so they weren't at the town garage. Having a TV then, what happens then is there's a TV there, so it's like a big monitor, so you can see who you're talking to. So if, um, you know, someone is at home or whatever, they're talking, you can see them. And at first his suggestion was, you know, first, you know, you can buy a TV and see how that goes. Then if that's not the best acoustics, we might have to buy some separate speakers. Um, and, and, but you would also, so you'd have to subscribe to Zoom, you'd have to buy a TV, and, um, you know, we could start with just a computer monitor, um, and then some, you know, portable speakers, but we, you know, like I said, I, the TV may be in our future anyways, or at least a bigger monitor because of trainings, so that if, you know, Gabe, Richard, Alan, you know, whoever, myself, were doing one thing, we could all sit here and look at one thing. So that was his option. So he's saying no owl. And this is so far, this is the cheapest option. The cheapest option is the Zoom um, subscription, which was you know attached to my credit card. So it was like 12 something, 13 a month maybe. And we could buy a year subscription um, and purchasing a smart TV. And then let's see how that goes. And then after that, we have to, we could add speakers, and he said you could start with even cheap $40 computer speakers, <coughs> and then if that, if you could kind of upgrade from there or just buy like a, a bar or something, but that was it. But he did not think the owl would work. So the pro is. You have plenty of speaker right there. There you go, that's right, Dave. That's right <coughs> the so, yeah. crazy. so the POW, so the option, that's one option, but, and that takes care of only the select board. So if you had equity inclusion, planning commission, whatever, that want to do a hybrid, they would be back to the, um, you know, they could plug your laptop, they could plug a laptop into the television so you could see better, but the visual would still be, you know, somebody well, sitting here with a laptop around. looking at the audience. Um, did you have a thought around, just because I know part of our discussion was we hadn't budgeted for a larger purchase like a TV, yeah. Would, were you thinking about like maybe splitting that across departments since the road crew would use it some, but we would use it so like kind of split it up so no one entity is bearing the burden of that purchase or had you not gotten there yet? Well, I wasn't, you know, honestly, I hadn't really thought much about it only because it all comes out of the general fund. So, it, you know, Alan doesn't necessarily have a, a <coughs> he didn't budget anything in for a computer specifically. Mm -hmm. Probably what we would do is just take it out of what I the computer budget right now because I think myself and Dietrich I tried every year to but every somebody has to get a new computer so we nobody crashes we stay up on technology so I think it's myself and Dietrich but they're not bad for because we don't need monitors we don't need keyboards we just need that so I think I could just take it out of that and I'm assuming we could get one for five hundred to seven hundred dollars. Um, because when we got the price from Vermont Digital, I think he had it like eight something, and he thought we could do better than that. Mm -hmm. um, 
Well, and you get a big enough phone, we can show football games. And there you talk, go. Talk That's right. Game, so we have charge admission. We yeah. get our money back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but like I said, then then that is a, you know, with the help of Orca, that's great. If Orca somehow could make it, then, yeah. you know, the hybrid would be, again, a laptop, which wasn't bad. You said you could hear. We were yeah. just pointing it. And, um, and it would be, again, because we'd have to put the laptop here in between the two of us. We'd have to be checking um, who was there, which would be easier if I wasn't also taking the minutes. So if, um, you know, Julie's able to do that, that'd be terrific um, because I can't take the minutes from the Zoom and, you know, right. do all that. So maybe we even take turns or something, uh, the, the, figuring that the out. The TV and or monitor should be as large as possible. Right, so, you know, it's, I'd have to look around for pricing and I'm not even sure anybody wanted to do that. So I haven't, wait, I haven't spent any time because in the meantime, I have, um, one extra computer monitor. So if currently, if the road crew is doing it, I could put, you know, Alan could have his laptop and somebody looking at it with him and I could set up another monitor over there for two more people. So I, you know, I don't need to do any of this. We could, I could make what we have for existing technology work if I needed to. It's really a choice of the select board. And, um, I have made my case from the get go that, you know, money and, and, and I, I do not begrudge them. So just remember, we've already, the historical side, we 3,600 for back rent. We wiped out their 2,400 of rent. Now we're looking at a television. Retirement. You know, because we're already off with retirement. And I don't know if we had a budget, say the TV and Zoom and stuff is, you know, a thousand bucks. Now, obviously I, I can look, I haven't spent any time looking to see in the budget where I'm gonna come up with that money because I'm too busy trying to find the 30,000 for retirement. So, uh, so you know, and I don't know of a grant that's out there that's going to help us with that, frankly, at this point. Um, maybe if, you know, if we bought one before, maybe during that COVID relief thing, we could have got it then, but who knew? You know, we bought a laptop, you know, we did think to buy a new laptop, yeah. so. Hey, I think, uh, you know, but like I, I said before, know. I think the idea is a good idea. Um, and worth exploring, but I just like the urgency of like having to do it now. Um, and the only reason why I say that is, well, one, I mean, I, I think the costs are sort of petty to get it started, but but my experience with being remote versus in person has been the same amount of people. Like I, you know, if if when we were doing Zoom, if we saw fifty people on Zoom, but when we are in person, there's only three, then wow, there's a lot of benefit to that. But you know. Every time we signed into a Zoom, I mean, there wasn't any more people there than the usuals that were here, you know. And um, you know, so I, I mean, in some cases, I'd almost read it like, you know, town meeting day, put it on the, you know, on the warning for whatever, fifteen hundred dollars for communications to upgrade to meeting, you know, select board meetings, and put it back on the voters because they're the ones that are actually would be using this, right? And I mean, I just don't, I just don't see the urgency like it has to be done like right now. I think it's a great idea, but I just don't see like spending, you know, I don't want to say spend $1,500 and say, I told you so, look how many people are dialed into this thing, right? There's five, you know? Um, but I mean, that's been the reality. And I, you know, I, I sit in on the school board ones and, you know, they have both in person and Zoom now and there's nobody, you know? I mean, it's, you know, and they've spent money on technology for that and, I, I just don't see the, unfortunately, the, you know, I know everybody talks mm -hmm. about accessibility, but when you give it to, in this case, the accessibility, we didn't see anybody take advantage of it in a, in a number that was worth spending the extra money. I don't mm -hmm. know. That's just my opinion. But, I mean, I would rather, I'd rather put it in the budget we got coming on a standalone vote and let the voters, you know, do they want to spend an extra X amount of dollars on technology to to be able to communicate with their select board better, you know? I did um, get an email from Lenny and said that he had um, some, totally don't blank now, um, <laughs> on the word I want to use, but any conflict, there we go. And, uh, so about who was, that, so he was couldn't be here for maybe mm -hmm. only every other meeting. And he did say in his email, he asked me about hybrid meetings because of the new Delta or COVID variant that he was a little nervous about. Select board meetings, and I just emailed him back and said, you know, 
basically thanks for your attendance and see when you see it. And, and um, the select board, as you know, is in on um, you know been having discussions and looking into this. And I've met with Vermont Digital and Orca, and you know we've talked about it. So <laughs> help me because I don't think it's a good idea. I think it's, I think it's a horrible idea. I think if you're really interested, you do like these folks did. You'll come to the meeting. Yeah. And you'll talk with us. But if you've got a conflict, how is this money we spend going to help you? If you can't come to this meeting, how can you go to a meeting that's on television? You know, we you, got, you just told me you had a conflict. I mean, so sir, the, the yeah. problem is not the communication or the TV. It's you have a conflict. Yeah, he was one person, but he's one. And the Orca Media does have. So if you want to participate. You know, in real time, then that's an option. Otherwise, of course, Orca has done a nice job of filming your meetings and having them out there for you to listen to in a, in a like a couple days later, right? Yep. Uh, but I, I'm, I'll tell you right now, my vote's no. I'm not. Gonna, I can't support something that I've been in this town for voted voting age, and we have nothing but less, fewer, and fewer and fewer people participating. We've changed meetings from evenings to weekends to different day, days of the week. Nobody more, no one else comes. Well, I think I don't what... believe you set this TV up if you get a regularly five people regularly, you'd be damn lucky. Well, I think that, that you know that's kind of to my point is put it back to the voters on a standalone item <coughs> on town meeting day to say. This is how much it's going to cost you, right? Because we don't have it in the budget right now because we're, we're already behind, um, unfortunately, with the, the retirement, you know, Vermont retirement system all of a sudden saying, here, you need to come up with X amount of dollars that we don't have. Right. So we're going to be pinching our pennies anyways. And then, you know, like we talked about, you know, the historic society and things like that and, and who knows with what we'll have for, for other grievances and things like that. So, um, you know, we're already behind. Uh, but two pennies on the tax rate, you know, that we get to find creative ways in our existing budget to try to get to even. But I think it's, a, you know, you know, I'm all for, you know, presenting what the realistic cost is to do this. Put it on the ballot on town meeting day and say, you know, this is what it will cost if, if you know, if the community wants to have the option of the hybrid model where you could participate more. Um, and, and then at least it's their voice, right? I mean, they're the ones going to vote it in or out, and, it, and then I it doesn't agree, become us I, dictating. I agree, you know? but I don't. Uh, we, uh, I don't know if I've said this here before or not, but when I was a pastor in Woodsfield, Ohio, maybe 40 years ago, we had an addition to the building. And in the process, we removed a four-inch curb that made the building accessible. The number of people that I had to visit because they were shut in was cut by 90% because of that four inch curve. And we never had anybody come who was in a wheelchair. Now, we could have, you know, if we had been arguing about well, we don't have any people in a wheelchair, and we don't think it's going to make any difference. Uh, we never would have had that experience. Uh, I think that being accessible is uh, more than who will take advantage of it. It's it's a it's a it's an image that the town has of being open, accessible, and inviting. Julie would be here tonight if we were hybrid. It's, uh, that's just a, a fact of our own, <laughs> yeah. our own personal life and experience. But, I also recognize we don't have any money right now. I do think that it's appropriate to put in the budget 
something that's relating to communications, public relations, community relations, however, however we label it, that provides with the capacity to let people know what's Night. going to let people know what's going on in, and to participate in real time. I think that that's important. But that's, I, I understand everybody's saying what they're saying. I just want to get my two cents in. You don't yeah. know what you don't know. We don't know what we don't know in terms of uh, somebody out there who doesn't drive or somebody out there who's elderly or whatever who might want to come. So you, just out of curiosity, I want to make sure I have three minutes. So you don't think that because you've already done Zoom for a few months, you don't think that was a good, like a big enough test sample, if you oh, will? I think, that, I think that that's an example of being, uh, of having done that. We know that we can do it. It's uh, the technology, we have the technology, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't, but going hybrid now becomes a learning from COVID about a way to move forward and in a world that has changed in the last 12 months. Thank you. That's so. It, that's where I stand. Uh, and all all I'm going to say is, you know, the I go to a lot of select board meetings a year in my business, and I will say that what we do, just what we do with Orca, uh, and the way the board is um, set up, is we are way more transparent and inviting than a majority of the towns I sit on. We are to be you know, congratulated. Most of them don't have even ORCA. So if, if they want to know what went on at the select board meeting, they're going to have to wait, whatever, 21 days from now to what was in the meeting minutes, right? I mean, that's, there's so many towns like that. And I think, you know, we do have, you know, ORCA, which is good. You know, our agendas are accessible. Um, and we are very, um, you know, there, there's a lot of boards that are really structured and don't really take much comment um, other than the public comment period, right? Yeah. Like anything else, it's, you know, this is our meeting, you know, um, type deal. And um, you're but right. But I, I think if I personally was sitting here and we hadn't done the Zoom, you know, let's say we hadn't done it and someone had brought this to our attention, I'd be thinking, well, you know, there's probably a pool of people out there that really would take advantage of that. But having gone through we'll call it a test sample of Zoom meetings and witnessing other Zoom meetings like school boards and other things like that, I don't see any extra participation. And I even went through some of the old meetings that we had just to see, like, am I wrong? And in some cases, we had two extra people, but that was two people that I know was in the same household with two laptops. And I'm like, you know, I know they were in the same household. Like, Chris, you're so. absolutely right. We have expressed ourselves and... and mm -hmm taken steps to be open and inclusive yeah. and inviting. This is just another way we can do that. Yeah. And, and that's, and I, I'm yeah. not putting down or denying any of that or the capacity for people to come to the meeting. I simply think that it's another step that's consistent with who we are and what we've been doing. And we're to be, we're, we can pat ourselves on the back. I yeah. think we do a good job. Well, and one, Lily, one, you were going to talk to BRI, right, or something? Yeah, we, and we actually canceled our meeting oh, okay. this past month, so it didn't <laughs> okay. come up. Um, but I think one upside of this potential model is that we're, we're sort of doing a little bit of both, right? We're not, we're not fronting this massive cost to invest in a huge system and having to figure out, um, you know, who's going who's gonna to run it during the meetings, but by having ORCA that's already here, you know, sort of being the assist on that, all we're investing in is the, the piece of infrastructure, which the TV, I think, is actually a functional piece of infrastructure that our town would utilize on many different levels. And so I can, I can kind of see the argument for even though maybe we didn't see a huge spike, I would, I would still say it, it wasn't, you know, 
it wasn't statistically significant, but there there was additional participation that probably would never walk into a meeting in person. And we don't know who's moving to town that might want to get involved, and it might be a great way for them to feel like from the safety and comfort of their home, they can kind of get to know the town, and maybe those people then become volunteers. But to have to have the sort of the side of it where what we're investing in has multiple functions. It's not just for this one thing, whereas the OWL really is just for the one function, right? Where the TV, you, you've already been yeah. talking with the road crew about such an investment. And so I, I feel like if we're, if we're looking at it from that sort of utilitarian, all-encompassing <clears throat> perspective, I don't see the harm in it aside from our budget. Right? The, the budget is sort of the big looming question, and maybe it is putting it to the voters, or maybe it's sort of Therese working her magic of, mm -hmm. okay, you're going to take 50% from the road crew budget, and, right. you know, and, and sort of everybody pitches in and then makes it happen without draining any yeah, one department's I, budget. And I think, yeah, I agree with you. I think if we were sitting here, <clears throat> not, you know, let's say, you know, you know we didn't just get the information from the state about the retirement differences and, and the historic mm -hmm. society thing, and uh, we were on a level playing field, it's, you know, it's kind of petty, it's easier, right? easier pill to swallow. But I, I think on the responsibility end right now, if we are, gotta come up with, you know, roundabout numbers, $40,000 for retirement, and then we just lost our, one of our small revenue sources for the town, and then we go buy something, we kind of look kind of reckless, like, why yeah. aren't you pitching? pinching your pennies so that we don't right. have a deficit or have to retire something or, right. you know. You can always have this group to want it. You do a GoFundMe page and you yeah. fund it. <laughs> right. Well, uh, the other thing, I, I hate to say it, but I, I gotta think that somehow, that if we really wanted it, there could be a, mm -hmm. a donor or it may not have to be a person. It could be a business, <coughs> you know, or something that would donate break anybody in half. some equipment or something. Um, but no. But right. worst case scenario, we could put it in the budget. They, they can have their, their well, well, name, on name on it. Name on it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, down the road, it may have to be expanded into something different. Right. But so you're looking at the build it. If you build it, they will come. Versus if you didn't build it, you never. They're certainly not going to come. Right. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. That's a better way to look at it. And for the expenditure of the TV, I'm sure we can find <laughs> somebody. <laughs> I mean, to, if you, I can. I mean, just. Pricing. I'm sure there's more to it than that. I yeah. Mean, it's not just. 500 bucks, and we're up and running, you know. Because um, we, I can get price. I haven't priced a television. I, I'd have to go back and look at the Zoom package, but that's fine. We can. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can get pricing to see. I can ask Vermont Digital, you know, look for a TV that was, you know, cheaper than the 800, and and then you're right. You could you add know, to it later you know, days, right? You have speakers and <coughs> and. Um, yeah, you know, I like the idea. You just like, have to figure out all know, the cards. I'm not looking to see the other department. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. We, we just talked about the work of going to do the select board meeting, but the utilitarian part, you want to do it for other people, someone else will have to run it. Right. Well, well maybe those individual yeah, right. committees decide internally, you know, if the EIC really wants to have a hybrid meeting, they can use our infrastructure, but they have to figure out you know, their video equipment or their laptop, you know, connection, which frankly, every laptop now comes with video equipment in it. So it, is it perfect? No. I mean, this is sort of what Therese was saying, right? It's like, I was able to hear Lenny's comment in the back of the room from Therese just spinning <coughs> her laptop around. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you know, I couldn't physically see him, but I knew his that. voice enough to know like, oh, it's that sounds like Lenny. Here. Cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, and so I think, you know, Dave, to your point, I think that we can offer up a, a piece of it and they can meet us uh, somewhere in the middle. And maybe it is that we still reach out and find, you know, the community partners that help, help us match that cost to purchase the TV because then they do have that right. infrastructure accessible to them. And, you know, I yeah. wouldn't give up on BRI just yeah. purely because we... I'm happy to call to email TJ at Vermont Digital and say, okay, what's a price for the T what's a price for a TV in the cart? And um, and then he can mm -hmm. yeah, what's the cost on a starter package and then we can right. add the, the TV. Yeah. 
bells and whistles to it well, as he, we go. He, right, as you know, different like, community yeah, organizations. Yeah, well, you know what I mean? Like, Pitching, I mean, yeah. Because that's, he had given us the price originally, and he, he was the one who sat, I, I can't remember if the cart was 400, I can't remember, yeah, but he, something, but he said that TV, <coughs> he's like, I think we could find it cheaper in hell. But that's like a build a cart. Yeah, I, I was actually trying to think, I was like, do I want to try to have middle schoolers build a cart? <laughs> it could be an interesting design. That is my suggestion on BRI. Does it have Helping to be a special TV, TV or just it? a smart TV? It just has to be just a smart a TV. Buy. We've talked right. about Right, it just has yeah. to be a smart TV. Um, and, um, but I'm not going to buy the TV. I mean, I want someone who knows what but they're doing. You're looking. also looking, you're not looking at 45 inch, you're looking at 70, 80, 90 inch. Well, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, how I big. Yeah. Uh, but you are. Right? Yeah. So, well, they, they Riley's company. Cheap. I mean, you can buy like those 80-inch TVs for like 500 bucks now. I mean, it used is to be thousands of dollars. Is that how the TV you're looking for is about 80-inch? Yeah. 80-inch TV? Yeah, you can go to Walmart. I mean, it's not the greatest quality one, but you go to Walmart and get one for a few hundred bucks. Well, but if you're thinking for this space, for, for I would say. I'm thinking you're going to be, I mean, if you're going to spend $700, you know, don't spend 550 and be... Yeah, right. Doesn't work. Yeah. So I can ask him for a different for a yeah. price on a eighty inch TV, a car, and then obviously uh, we can price zoom. Eighty inches too big. It is. Well, what? <laughs> tell me what's the size. I don't think so. Well, I don't know. Six, what, see what's what the they next say. Size I don't down. know. Yeah, what, are, what, are, what are the other towns? Hey, I still have a thirty six inch at my house, and that was big. So <laughs> I mean, okay, it's like it's it's TV. You sit back here, back to work, put that TV up here on the stage, and tell me what your thirty six inch, what you can see. Well, you'd have to move yeah. it. It's, it's, right it's on a yeah. cart. It's on a cart. I'd say let's let's argue about size once we decide. Well, I know, but I have to get the price. I don't know. Yes, you do. Having given the dimensions of the. Town He's been here. Place full room yeah, here and home what's his recommendations? He says my recommendation is conference centers that that broadcast use TVs hosted. To yeah, he's um he was here because I sixty I, inch I was big enough. Okay, sixty. Just give All right, have well, him give I'll us a professional him. price on what it would cost, and then we'll just hammer it out. We'll say yay or nay, or we I'll we'll ask him to price a couple of different size TVs, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Tell them to do that, and then um, three sizes, Perfect. 60 to 80, and then the car, and then Zoom, and then, well, Zoom I can do, but um, I want someone else to take out the TV. I bought my husband a TV for his 60th birthday, and I was like, read so many articles, I thought my head was going to implode. Oh I'm my like, God, like, all this just so you can watch out of the so, you know, and now they're well, tanking it, so uh, he's really no, not happy. So Plus, you got some that you can't really see from the sides, but you can exactly. see, see Some of them are wrapped around. You and then wait until the right. sun shines in it, and then you won't oh, yeah. see anything. That's yeah. right. Then we're going to need blinds. <laughs> and then we're going to have to have a sound bar. Because now we're up to 10,000. That's why you don't use the monitor to use the TV. All right, wrap it up. Wrap it up. It's a whole thing. So that's, yeah, so that was what I did. All right. We're good on that? Yeah. Um. So quickly, I just wanted to, just while it was fresh in our heads, um, you know, Therese and I had done quite a bit of talking this weekend and today on, you know, just kind of our emergency preparedness um, piece and, you know, and, and, you know, through the discussions that Therese and I were having, you know, she had brought up like, hey, we didn't, we didn't realize, like an example was, we didn't realize that, you know, our fuel source for the town is at the town garage, which we don't have. Uh, if the power goes out, we have no way of pumping the fuel. Yeah, so, I didn't know he didn't have a generator. So, for <laughs> instance, like some stuff like that. Um, and, and, and maybe there's other things that we haven't thought of, but, you know, I don't want to say that it was like, you know, it was almost kind of a, a, a good... Um, Exercise. Yeah, I don't want to say practice, but... Exercise. Mean, you know, yeah. you're never going to get it perfect, but, it, you know, we've got a good trial run. Mm -hmm. What Where... You know, maybe it's a good time to audit our trial run of, you know, what worked, what didn't work, what do we maybe need to adjust. We do have our budgeting yeah. pieces coming here in a couple months, so it's an opportunity to say if we need to buy something or start yeah. thinking about something. Or And Alan um, has the money for generators in his tool budget, and so we chat about that because he said, well, I can come and get your generator. I said, uh, no, you can't because I'm the emergency operations center. So then I talked to Dave Altergetti and he said, well, you can't have my generator. I said, listen, 
somebody needs to get it to give him a generator because I said, when you go to fill up your fuel trucks, you're going to wish he had gas. <laughs> and uh, he so Dave. Can there be an option for like a hand crane? Well, or, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. you know, but give I mean, like, what are the options? Yeah. But or... Dave Aldrighetti luckily had two that he owned personally. And he said, if this happens, he said, tell Alan to call me. He was his power. I will bring him on my personal generator. So then Alan had already priced one right before the storm. So he, um, it was all set to, to get a generator. But like Chris said, it was one of those things that kind of came up. And um, the listers are cleaning out that office, Mo and Judy, and they had this. I'm like, hey, look at the box. And so I was telling Kelly, we're going to put some forms in here. And uh, Dave Aldrighetti had told me, oh, I have those forms in my desk at the fire department. I think I already have 20 copies because we talked about, you know, that you can't, you know, you have to be dispatched in order for you to get FEMA money and, and all those things. But and Chris was right. There was some things just going through the process that were okay. What do we say? I know now we need to have a little tree. I have a little list already of things for I think Alan should have a checklist of some things that we, he and I talked about, but if he wasn't here, somebody needs to know all the vehicles need to be gassed up, the chainsaw blades need to be sharpened, the, you know, everything needs to be ready mm -hmm. so that you're not, you know, you're prepared. So. <clears throat> well, the other thing that I was thinking of, um, mainly because we were, we were actually out of town when you sent the first email and we, act, we changed our travel plans back so that we'd be back in town if the storm hit because otherwise we would Sorry. have been, no, no, it, well, we would have been traveling through the storm and we just decided that was not worth it. Um, but one of the things I was thinking of was um, when I first joined the board, Carl Russell had really recommended I get ICS trained. And I did the ICS, they, he had, um, okay, the guy's name is escaping me, Richard something, but he had the Kubliana. guy. Kubliana. Kubliana, yeah. He came here and did a training. And so it was sort of uh, Dave Aldergetti and Gary Kugler, they re-upped their so basic, ICS 100. yeah, and yeah. but you know, for me, it was my first go around with it, and it was really helpful to kind of know what what would be expected of me in that situation, mm -hmm. and how can I be most helpful to the town at that moment in time. And so I sort of, in my mind, I was going through my checklist of like, okay, here's where I could plug in, and I know how to get in touch with the people where I know I'd sort of be best suited to help out, depending on, mm -hmm. you know, what happens. But it might just be a thing for. You know the the town and board members in general to be thinking about of like we we are one of those sort of lines of defense and we're not we don't have the same training as you know the fire department but they're going to be needed in different spaces and where we can be is kind of here assisting you or in different little pockets around right. town and and sort of be you know your assists that you can right. call on and so just thinking about it from that perspective that <coughs> It's, it's probably worth us all keeping at least somewhat up to date, or at least a, a few of us at any point in time on the board. Have you had the board training, the ICS 402 maybe? So there is a board training that you what, can do that I can give you. What is ICS? So it's incident command, command okay. system. And um, so we, I can make, I can, that's a great idea. I, I actually, now that you say it, I think I, w I want to say, I think I did the board one because it was a 400 level. Yeah. Um, so that would have been the board one, which yeah. is good because I've done ICS 100, ICS 200, and I actually had talked to him about 300 and he's like, and which I was a little nervous to take because it's pretty intense. When I did 100, it was easy. It was not a big, you know, I'm not easy, but it was online and it was easier. ICS 200, I did with a group of firefighters and police officers and you did scenarios and it was it was really good and horrifying and scary and informative all at once and mm -hmm. and um, but there's a board level so that's great Lindley I will yeah, so I just will look at that because you're right you should and because ICS is like that there's the you know um, the um, you know emergency management person you know directors is me and then you have the offshoots of that and who's going to do planning and who's going to do you know that's why we do that local emergency management plan and that's what I was saying to Alan over the phone. I was like, all right, if you, I have three contractors on standby, so no other town will scoff them up. They will come to us first. Mm -hmm. But I, you can't call them. You need to call me so that that way I know where you're out and then we can keep track. And there's, and the paperwork is insane, as Chris and I can attest. So, it, you know, it definitely is a system. So it would be great if the board could do that. So I'll look at that because I'm sure now, I'm sure it's online and people could take it at their leisure. I mean, you wouldn't think that in a natural disaster situation that, Documentation and paperwork yeah. would be like your top priority. Right. What do you think it would be secondary. But if you don't, if you don't, right. if you are not documenting and filling out the right paperwork, even before you dispatch people, you will not get paid anything. Yeah. Right. Like nothing. 
Yeah, and, and that's kind of the last thing you even think about doing. You're thinking about fixing, yeah. dealing, not, yeah. not you know, okay, let's get to town, you know, but there's that's so true. much paperwork. Because I had a conversation with Alan on Sunday morning, crazy. and I said, hey, do you guys still have notebooks in, the, in all the trucks and equipment? He's like, oh, I'm not sure. I said, then you need to go run right down right now to Rite Aid, and I'll reimburse you later, and you buy one subject college notebooks, and you make sure everybody has one because we will need to know exactly where they were, what were they driving, where was that material going, yeah. how much of it. I said, if they were operating a hand shovel, that's a different FEMA code. Yeah, so, that's, that's like, funny. you need to have this. And he was like, okay. I said, remember when you had to go back and sit there? And the four, you know, when it was after the April 2019, and a couple times they were like, all right, they had to remember where they were, where all the, you know, looking, and I'm like, mm. and sometimes you need somebody standing out in the road taking load slips when you're, you know, happening in Bristol, you're building a piece of, you know, Lincoln, the road to Lincoln back, and you got somebody just, Johnny, no, you know, anybody standing there collecting load slips, making notes so that it's, and it's crazy because the documentation will but I think it's a great time. Of, you can I, fix anything. You just I, can't just talk the paperwork. I'll kill you. I think, like Paul had said earlier, I mean, I think the nice thing, and you know, years ago, I know when Irene hit, you know, a lot of the anger in the community kind of got focused on the board at the time, and um, you know, but I mean, sitting in the same chair now, I, you know, how much could have the board really done? You know, I mean, I know. Right. It was easy to blame the board, but you know, um, but you know, the biggest thing that has come out of that is how do we uh, prepare ourselves as a town, but also as individuals for because we have to be, you know, we have to own our own individuality of what's going on and preparing ourselves. But the information getting out there to just remind people that hey, you know, if you haven't already, make sure you have you know three days of this and three days of that, and you know. Um, just you know because because again we were talking today with the reporter like you sit back with all the people that have come into the community in the last 10 years and then people that have left and you know there, there's probably a large there's probably a good amount of people that didn't experience everything you know other than hearing about it or you know that weren't here or, you know you hadn't officially moved here but you know so there's probably so many people that and I know myself young people as a citizen like the night before when people were, you know, you're watching the TV, these people like going into box stores and buying everything and I'm sitting there like, what, a bunch of idiots like this, you know. <laughs> and then the next day, like the rain starts and 45 minutes later, there's trees going across the fields and then it was like, wow, like, okay, it's too I late for to me to shots. do that. You, yeah. know, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, sure. I mean, until, you know, and my, Paul was right there on the front lines until like you actually saw the events unfold like so fast, like um, watching on the TV last night, we're down in um, Tennessee, they had oh, that flash flood. That's horrible. Like, I mean, yeah, you, you know, until you're in that position, like you have no idea, like, so at least in this case, we're able to, yeah. you know, information, preparedness information of, you know, and this was, you know, two days ahead of time, like just a reminder that I, right. this is gonna hit, make sure you have this, make sure you do that, this is where you can go for help, you know, I did, I did have to say, oh, how can I be personally involved and assist whatever had to happen? And paperwork is something I could do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's, uh, uh, that, that's a question that came to my mind. So, yeah, I think training, it's great. So that a, training and then. Yeah, I'll look for that. To, but that yeah, just gets you thinking, you know, I think we had a pretty good trial run, I guess if you yeah. call it. And, you know, how can we improve upon that? Because we all know that once the storm hits, it's hunkered down, right? It's There's right. really nothing you can do. You're just right. hoping for the best. And then afterwards, then, then you start into your, you know, taking care of immediate emergencies Triage. and then rebuilding, right? Right. So I think one of the things, you know, we talked about, I think maybe Dave, Ed, you know, I talked about before, is like people maintaining their own private driveways. And I think that's something I'm going to spend a little bit of time Cold talking about. And, yeah, in yeah. town court this year is, I, I personally, well, we witnessed it. There was a couple of cases where some of the damage that we sustained in that April 2019 was because people hadn't maintained their own driveways. 
They hadn't crowned their own driveway. They hadn't taken care of their own ditches. So all that material comes off their road, plugs our culvert, and the road's gone. That blows so I do think that's something. I actually mm -hmm. made a note for Kelly. We did town report. She has a little ongoing binder, and I put a sticky note in there that right. said, you know, community, you know, volunteerism, and also like driveways, because part of the thing I think that we talk about is, is people being responsible for themselves and self reliant. And, and saying, okay, you know, like you take care of your driveway, you keep it ditched, you keep it crowned, but mm -hmm. people don't. And then that wipes out the infrastructure. So because you didn't take care of your responsibility, which is clearly your responsibility, your neighbor can't, you know, just mm -hmm. lost something. So I, I think <clears throat> a piece of that, and then I don't even know how we hammer home BT alert. We, right. We've pushed that through town meeting, through town reports, we've got it on the website. Kelly today, we were putting out a little thing saying, hey, we were lucky, this was a, um, a, a tropical depression, but did you sign up for VT Alert? You know, and kind mm -hmm. of putting that yeah. last minute pitch out on Facebook, but it gets a little frustrating for me personally, probably because I've been in municipal government a long time, but at some point you're just responsible. If you are part of the community, you have the right to vote, it is your responsibility to be educated about the issues. We can post it and write about it until the cows come home. But until you decide that this is your responsibility as a citizen, as a registered voter, to follow the issue, I just can't spoon feed you. And come and to I the think, meeting so you're informed. Yes, and I, it gets a little frustrating. <laughs> you know, read if you can't come, read the minutes, yeah. send an email or whatever, a phone call. And, so, but and this think, was a piece of it, too, was trying to get information. Yeah, but at yeah. some point, if you've lived anywhere, you face some sort of natural disaster, no matter where. But, but even the simple form that came from the town, you know, that one page form of what to have and what to, you know, expect. And it was so easy to forward that on to like your family or friends or your neighbor, yep. you know, um, where it's normally, normally when this happens, you start thinking about yourself, right? Like, how mm -hmm. am I gonna prepare the outside and this and that and that. And, you know, not that you, trying to forget about your neighbors and your family, but <laughs> usually sometimes that doesn't come to mind right out of the gate. Or you say, okay, what do I tell them? Or, you know, it was easy just to, with a yeah. click of a button, like, boom, forward that to my dad, and, you know, or your yeah. neighbor, or, yeah. you know. So, so. Well, we'll kind of fine tune that a little bit. Laura, Perez had had some stuff, so we'll kind of fine tune that a little bit. And then, um, so the only other thing under the town manager's report well, there's two things. One was uh, Tuesday night, tomorrow night, 5.30 to 6.30. Um, so there's it's the five, six million dollars, Paul, you, you've been looking for from Ooh, the rec. Nice. Is, is uh, finally released on the how-to. There is a letter of intent due this Friday. And it's an online form. Um, and it's funny because I had reached out to Chris Fors and Dietrich Feeney and we started looking at the trails for behind the school and the rec area. And so we were gonna, you know, we hadn't heard anything from anybody. I'd reached out to the Conservation Commission, hadn't got anything back and said, okay, well, let's just file for this project then so that way we don't miss the boat. Mm -hmm. And then we got a bigger email from Rebecca Sanborn Stone saying, you know, we'll think really big, and what about this, and connecting with these other towns, and and um, and then a couple of people came back and said, look, you know, we could make it Bethel-centric, but let's think a little bit bigger. And so I put out an email saying, okay, then you need to come here between 5.30 and 6.30 on Tuesday. If you can't come, give me a detail of what is it you'd like to see in the order you'd like to see it in, and I'll put it up on the whiteboard, and this is what's gonna win. And while we're here, who's gonna file the letter of intent? Who's gonna write the application? And when this com thing comes through, because you wanna go so big, who's gonna manage it? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. when it was a smaller piece mm -hmm. for just this, you know, Chris <coughs> and Dietrich and I, he'd done so much of the work between the school and the trails and Carla's Meadow was gonna be doable, but if it's huge, it, it, it's doable, but it's not doable for me. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're going to meet tomorrow night. So we will be submitting a letter of intent on Friday. But I don't know. I know part of the project is going to be the school, behind the schools, and connecting the trails, and, and hopefully some wayfinding signage, and Carla's Meadow, and um, and that. So we'll see how big it gets, or what it gets to be. And those grants, but, are they... Is there a certain match? Or so right now it's no match. There's stopping? no match. And so right now what happens is the letter of intent is due Friday, August 27th. You send that in and then you wait. 
if you get okay, then you apply for the grant. So, you know, they kind of okay. sort the weed from the chaff who's, early on. Who's the grant through? Or who's sponsoring it? I, I can't I, that's fine. right now. I can't remember. I feel like it's in my email. I just haven't caught it all the way up with it. It is in the email. You're right. I didn't write it down. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's Department of Tourism and, or who it is, actually. But it's it's a lot of money. But they're looking. Is the Borac? They, yes, Borac. And they want big, they want big, um, bigger grants. It's, not, it's, it's kind of in a way, I think. Did you get that impression, Lindley, that they want bigger grants? I was kind of a little disappointed. I was thinking they should have, with that much money, they could have done a whole bunch of I honestly, I hadn't read it yet because it hmm. came in while was I was trying money. not to read email at yeah, all. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's money. But, so anyway, so we'll see what we see. And part of what we apply for is going to be who steps up and says, I can, this is what I can do later. Because right. we can't, this isn't we'll apply and then figure it out later. Uh, you know, because I know it can't fall back on me because I don't have the time to do it. And um, I don't have anyone in the town office right now at the time. Dietrich could help once now the pool's closed and stuff, but we can't manage a huge yeah, ramp like that. Is the pool repair something that could be in there? Well, at first I didn't think so because, but Rebecca seems to think so. But I'll be honest, when I read the parameters of the grant, I didn't walk away with that feeling. Mm. Uh, to me, I felt like it could be, it was kind of new new development of trails and accessibility and signage, I did not get the impression that it could be the pool um, when I read it. So I'm hoping mm -hmm. someone else that's, has interpreted it differently I because that. I'd like to add the pool to it if it could because that's a big, that's at least $100,000. I wonder if you could somehow vaguely word the yeah. pool structure in there and then if, you know, we get put into that smaller pool to apply yeah. for the grant and then you could... You know, maybe they'll be. Yeah. Maybe the literature will be easier to figure out. Well, what I'm going to go through the information again. I've read the whole thing, <clears throat> but I've got to read it again mm -hmm. because that's what I thought about. Was my original thought when I saw the money was, aha, Paul's money is here. <laughs> and then I thought, okay, how can we get the pool fixed? Everything I saw was focusing on trails. Yeah. And development of trail systems. And, yeah. And 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 recreational facilities mm -hmm. but it never said anything about pools or it, not it, pools. I didn't get I don't the think it said I didn't get the impression we could rehabilitate something right, we already had. Right. But that's just me and so I'm gonna read it again. And um, but we had a project that was pretty much ready to go because we'd already written two grants for that project. So we already had the description. We, you know it was really gonna hit the easy button in a way. So, but now, you know, making it bigger, and that's not a bad thing necessarily, as long as we have people willing to help. Rebecca Sanborn Stone sent me a nice email because she can't be here mm -hmm. with all her details that we'll share. But so anyways, that's tomorrow night here from 5.30 to 6.30. We'll hammer out the details. So we will submit, but there is no match. And uh, so I haven't filled out a grant application yet because I don't know what this we're building for. Would, so. a, would a river walk along the yeah. side of the, the mm. buildings be considered a trail? trail? Like, yeah, they, yeah, they, they actually know. already planned yeah. it out. We have Just the, uh, like, the five million dollars to do it. You know, would that be a, a trail? Yeah, we have a drawing for that. And then, um, well, and it could probably be considered connected to the trails. That's right. Yeah. Just say you never know. Maybe, I don't know. Connect um, uh, Peavine to the rec center. Yeah, that's right. Then uh, Tatro, I'd said, uh, completed their portion of the water project, and then uh, Tim had put out a note, and then uh, Dave Eddy had emailed me um, his concern because of the horseshoe pits. One of them was, appeared to have been, I guess was damaged um, down back. So um, uh, Tim met today, did a walkthrough um, with John Hubble, the head of maintenance for school and grounds, and uh, there was two concerns. Um, one was straightening the horseshoe posts, of which two feet of them are bent, and the other was about cleaning up some dense grade stone around one of the bent stakes, which is pretty obvious. And um, so we're hoping that this work can be um, fixed. That's what Mr. Hubble wants, and that, um, so we're gonna get that work done. He, he actually had said he'd completely forgotten because they were in such tall grass that he'd even forgotten that there were horseshoe pits down there, is what Mr. Hubble said. And um, I'm working on that. They gotta, when they do the mowing, they got to mow that. Yeah, but we don't. That's a school property. Know, it's, it's but yeah. Not talking about that. Yeah, yeah, so when we, um, you know, we put in a bunch of material, back dragged it, and, and Mr. Hubble was very happy. He said that it looked better than it had, and he was very happy to have had Tatro as tenants, and 
he said he didn't care. He said just have them rebend it and clean up a little stone, and that was all he wanted done. He was very good with that. And he said, "Oh, gee, because we have it mowed over here." He said, "I forgot we had them." And um, I haven't seen people use them. Oh, he couldn't. I mean, there used the to be time. up until maybe hmm. three or four years ago. There used to be actually quite a bit of activity. Oh, yeah. yeah, but in the last. Three, four, five years, maybe now. I haven't yeah. really seen a whole lot of activity there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Interest. I put those in there. Yeah. I sweat. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. In there. So I really have got a stick yeah. in the game. Yeah. And that's where kids that can't play baseball or basketball, or whatever, they can pitch for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to have an athletic director, the soft stuff subject, but that says, okay, we're not going to play to the jocks. We'll get everybody involved. Yeah, some horseshoes. Yeah. So he was thrilled, though. He was just really happy in general. He said it was better than it, than before. So they're just going to do that, remove a little stone, rebend them, and they're good. But you said you had another question about Tatro, other than the shore horseshoe pits. Yeah. There's, was there always a four inch pond of water here by Alaska? You know, that's actually a question that I had. I don't um, think there was a four inch pond there always. Uh, no, there's not. And I, I, I don't believe so either. I'm gonna, uh, maybe if, but I'm. Maybe it's, you know what happened it's been is, there for a while. it could be because we repaved that before there was a nice pothole there that absorbed some of that water. So now it's not, but I'll, I was going to, I have a note um, when I pulled in, I wrote down, when I pulled in a pair, I asked him about that, about that. It could be one of the areas where, well, there you know, must there's still some be places a... where there's no storm drain. If there well, wasn't a storm water, drain there before, we Water didn't... does always collect right mm -hmm. at that spot, yeah. but it did drain out. And I, I can't remember what I was told, but mm -hmm. when I first bought the honor block, that was actually one of the questions I'd had, and I think it was Tim had given me the backstory of, yes, it does drain, we did this thing that makes it drain, but it'll drain slowly, but I wonder if maybe that got paved over in yeah. the renovation and now it doesn't drain. Yeah, and I don't because know. Because it, it's always I'm had sure. that issue, it collects yeah. it, but yeah. it would drain, mm -hmm. you know, it'd take about Eventually. a day. I don't, I don't think that's drained. Yeah, no, I would, would agree with you. Well, they yeah. must still have a final walk through. No. We already did the punch list. We had a huge because usually so they'll have like a final walk they did tim and alder chanelli at walk through and did some stuff and, but i'm not sure that's necessarily tatro that you know we have fixed a bunch of storm drains as we went through the project and they fixed the one on the other side so i did see it today so when i pulled in here i pulled out my packet and wrote asked him about this and i meant to ask him the other day when i came over met orca there was rain and there was a puddle there but i didn't write it down so I will find out what the what the deal is there, but because we do have, you know, we know there's a couple places that we don't have stormwater infrastructure and we have issues. So, but it, it's on my. Of course, list. it would be nice at some point if our storm drains did connect to the curb lines. You yeah, know, having a storm drain that's, you know, two feet off of the curb line kind of defeats the purpose yeah. of the curb line. But exactly. Yeah. You know, and some of them. I don't them, know why some of them like that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there was some weird stuff that we found, especially. That Maybe that'll storm come up in the stormwater ramp master because plan. it's like it yeah. doesn't flow. If it, it's not <coughs> next to the curb line. Yeah, and we do have money in this year's budget <coughs> to deal with a couple yeah. of these issues that we have in the build. There were still yeah, a couple. Yeah, a good size one be. in front of the post office. That yeah, always. and we still have a couple. I think there are mean that have to be rebuilt. So we did put money in the budget mm -hmm. that passed. Um, to line one or two and rebuild a couple where the bricks have all you know, kind of caved in. And, but that's on my, I made a note, so. Because I saw the drill through the big room. So we'll find out and I'll let you know. Anything further on your end, please? No, I'm good. We have the select board meeting minutes from the 9th of August. Mm -hmm. Unless anybody has any. Amendments to it. <coughs> Just need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So, I think it wasn't too. No, that's right. Okay, I'm going to make sure I was. It was the same two waves of the ocean. They all love you. Seagulls. And if you sit down by Mascoma, you can do it that right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, I didn't. Were there minutes from the BRTS last Not meeting? I, no, okay. no, I asked Kelly. I said, have you got any minutes here? And she said, no. Okay. So we didn't have, we haven't, received, we haven't received any. Okay. Um, and then Facebook Spotlight. Um, yep. Kelly has started back up doing the Facebook Spotlight. And this time it was um, Pam. It was Pam. And it was very nice. And yep. so she's 
kind of back. She, they were doing, um, I remember they did them when I came. Yeah. Um, and then, I don't know when she said she, she had done one, I think, for Jean or something. And I realized that will be here four years in September. Mm. Well, it's like the whole thing about Irene and yeah. anniversary. It's like, yeah. you know, mm. it just didn't feel like 10 years, I guess. Or, or maybe it felt like 10 years. <laughs> was, yeah. was yeah. Ago, but right. About four months in, it felt like 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. It just, <laughs> when that was going around about the 10th anniversary, I was like, yeah, it's well, been 10 years. Like, day, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if that was like, a, yeah. wow, it's been 10 years or... You know, there's, a, there's a high water mark on the bridge, yeah. the railroad bridge mm -hmm. down by my place. <laughs> 2011. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> Chris had a comment about the minutes and the length of time, and you just said you didn't get a, the RTS minutes. Uh, we had a big deal when I was on the school board that, according to Vermont statute, You've got five, five days. days. And it's true, I don't know draft, where their minutes are. Draft minutes. Yes, we, minutes. we adhere to that. We, I, I know. Like we board, but you're right. Yeah. I don't know because I asked yeah. Kelly, I said, did you get any minutes? And she said no. But the BRTS person, I think, is David Barker. And there's yeah. been a couple times she's had to, yeah. Kelly's gone looking for them and said, hey, yeah. I haven't seen your minutes in a while. Yeah. So it's something I think well, you have a board meeting Wednesday. Wednesday. You might want to bring that up and say, We've hey. Got what's interesting is he. I know David you. Barker's actually mentioned the five-day draft thing, and so no. I don't, I don't know if maybe he's just giving them to Victoria and assuming she's passing them on to you, or if he should be passing know. them on to both. He should of be you. sending them to Kelly. Um, right, Kelly, but, but if he yeah, just thinks know. he's doing all he needs to do, and you know, there's a yeah, that would be great if you guys. Was, we don't know. It could and, be um, done and just sitting on somebody. Yeah, because I know the planning commission. We didn't have a meeting mm -hmm. because we're not meeting till September. Mm -hmm. and, and but yeah. So. Well, I was also wondering if we if there's any tentative discussions about having a group get together again, like we had planned at the last combined uh, meeting of Bethel and Royal and Select Board. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I haven't heard from them. David Barker and, and Jerry, they all the said that in three beginning. months they were going to have all this information, and then it was pretty apparent that wasn't going to be about it. We had talked about it. We had thrown some yeah, kind of stuff. Well, and we I have, think they were very a, ambitious in what they thought they'd have together and were. That's right, but there's a history there. of us you know, having these discussions, and then for some reason or other, it, it just kind of falls Well, until they have any information, we don't have anything to discuss. All that information can be gathered. Yeah. Oh, and I will say too, as far as well, just, a, just an update as to where things are going. I mean, it seems like things are turned around you know, I don't quite know. a bit. Then, yeah, then yeah. Dave should bring that up and find out what they want to do. Well, I did just get the documents at the end of last week from John Duddy from Bar Harbor. So I just sent those to the lawyer um, out for the lawyer because obviously the transfer station is paying this bill. And um, I asked. Uh, Jerry, so what we ended up had to do is we had to decouple them, and I think I already told you that, that Royalton has to have theirs, Beth with theirs, but I said to Jerry, I still think yours need to match ours, and he agreed. I said, you're paying for the lawyer uh, to review these because the select board's not going to sign anything until the lawyer signs off on it. So I did forward those documents to Attorney Bob Fletcher, so once we get his edits, then we will go back to Bar Harbor and see you know, what they're willing to make for changes, if any, because at one point John had said some of the stuff to the boilerplate we're not willing to change. So if the lawyer says we're not signed it, then we'll reach out to another It might bank. be worthwhile, maybe um, maybe Dave and Lindley can bring it up at your next meeting that, you know, the budget season is coming, so it'd probably be nice to have another joint meeting if, if it's necessary, you if know, they have probably by the end of October. That yeah. way, if there's anything we need to start yeah. protecting yeah. ourselves in the yeah. budget right. or thinking sure. about to put on, you know, the warning or, you know. Yeah, because their budget, be the time to do it. by the interlocal agreement, they have to pass their budget in October. Mm. So I don't know if you guys are starting to <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> I don't think that's everybody's <laughs> surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it might be something that maybe bring it up right. about and the potential of a joint board discussion. Um, yeah, so in that case, we might want to have it by. This is Jerry. May want to have it by the end of September then. Yeah. If, if that the budget has to be in by October. 
I will say this, Dave, that if, I mean, I know that's the case, so, and I think Jen, I don't know where you all stand on that, and um, last I knew from Jerry, he was a one-person finance department, and... Um, David likes to help him. So. Oh, good. Well, they have the spreadsheet. I sent it to them. Um, so they certainly could build off from that Excel mm -hmm. document, and if they want my input, I'm happy to give them my two cents about retirement, how to budget for retirement, how to budget for health insurance, that sort of thing if they want it. Otherwise, the formulas are right in there if they know Excel, so. Um, right. Anything else to come before the board? 